Hello cyclists! Welcome back, this is Dwight with Bikes and Blades and uh, this is a follow-up to an earlier video I did on the uh, the Garmin Edge 1030 the unboxing and showing you the uh, the case and the screen protector that I put on it and in that video I kind of mentioned that I was going to show you how I modified the mount to actually clear that case. So you can see I've got the, the Edge 1030 inside this silicone case and it does add some thickness to the back of the, of the computer and so I've got a little insert in here. Whoops, there you can see the little blue thing that actually pushes the the interface up by a couple millimeters and gives me room to uh, to get the, the computer on the mount with the case installed. And so I'm going to show you the process, you know, from the, the early solution I had to the, the, the 3D printed solution I've got now. And it just kind of walks you through the whole process. So um, it's kind of a, it's a nerdy topic and everything, but if you're you know, if you've got something set up like this, uh, maybe this is interesting to you, or maybe it'll give you some ideas of, uh, you know, other modifications you can make, other things you could do, you know, with your, with your garment and your case and your mount. So, anyway, uh, that's what this video is, and I'm going to, uh, you know, like I said, go through the whole thing, and I'm going to show some points where if you want to skip, like, the CAD work I did in Tinkercad, you can just skip forward to the end and see the finished product, but uh, hopefully this is useful to you. So, thanks for watching. All right, so here's the Garmin mount that comes with the Edge 1030. You can see that it's designed to come in from the left side and hold the computer out in front of the bars. And it basically clamps the bar with a screw, very simple. There's actually a little rubber piece that goes in here too to uh, make it fit the, the standard 31.8 millimeter handlebar center. So within this mount, you can see that the, the bayonet portion where the computer fits is sits flush with the uh, with the mount. There's no there's no protrusion of this the of this receiver piece above the actual mount itself. So when the the computer doesn't have a case on it, it works fine. You basically drop it in there, give it a quarter turn, and you can see it it sits almost an interference fit between the mount and the uh, and the computer. I'll put my hand behind it so you can see that the gap is very small. It does clear, but not by a lot. There's, it's uh, a very close fit. So the problem that I have, or that I ran into, is that when the, if you install a case that has a closed back, the Garmin cases are open back, but if you put it into a case that has a closed back, like this KW Mobile case, bear with me while I get the case on here, All right, now you can see that there's some added thickness around this thing here. So when we put this in the mount, now it's actually interfering. You can see that the case is, is bunching up. It's, it's actually binding and, and causing a problem, and I don't have it fully locked in there yet. So it's, it's not a very good fit that way. So I didn't like that. So what I did to fix this initially, I took the, uh, you can basically disassemble this mount. It's, it's designed to come apart, and the reason for that is because when you have the external battery, there's a different centerpiece here that has uh, pogo pins, basically contacts that come through from the battery, and they connect to the electrical terminals on the back of the battery, or the, on the back of the computer itself. So those, those guys right there are the, the inputs for the external battery. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know if I had glare there in the earlier shot. So these are the pins for the external battery right here. All right. So what we can do is come in here and remove the screws that hold the factory mount together. There's a little Loctite on these, so they're sort of sluggish to come out. So we'll take out those two screws, and then you can see that the actual bayonet mount comes right out of the out of the out front mount itself. So initially, I had some because everybody I think everybody has a, a drawer of washers and screws and that kind of thing. So I had um, some split washers and other washers that I could stack up and basically 
put on these screws here and stand the mount up a little higher. And I basically got about a millimeter or two stack height out of these washers. Bring that up in closer so you can see. My phone, my camera wants to focus on everything except what I want to show you. Anyway, there you go. You get the idea. So I tried that and it worked. It was a good proof of concept. But I didn't really like just using these washers. And everything was a little bit, because I was had, had a split washer in the stack, everything was kind of wonky. It was, it was tipping and tilting. And so this, this guy was not guaranteed to be nice and flush or, or flat with the, with the mount. It was tipping. So the next thing I did is I went to McMaster Car. And I love, I love McMaster Car. Um, and I basically ordered a set of uh, these spacers. Basically these are 6 millimeter round by 2 millimeter thick by 3.2 millimeter inside diameter. So they're for an M3 screw, which is what these screws are. And it's 2 millimeters thick. So I took those spacers and I also ordered some longer screws because as you, as you put spacers onto these screws that come with the mount, it's very short. You don't have a lot of room to work. So I was running out of threads. So I got longer uh, M3 by 8 millimeter screws. I think the, the factory screws maybe like M3 by 6 or so. So this gives us an extra 2 millimeters to work with. Right? So my set of screws and standoffs for this thing looks like looks like this. And these, these have been disassembled. You can see I have the, the remnants of some Loctite on there. Basically what I did is drop these little spacers in here, and they're just about the right size to, sorry, I'm getting a lint in my, in my mouth. They're just about the right size to sit right in the little recesses in the out front mount itself. And then came in from the back side with these screws. It's a little fiddly. And then same thing with this guy here. And then drop the mount in on top and tighten this whole thing up. And I'll just, I'll do kind of a mock-up here. I'll just, I won't tighten it down all the way, but I'm just going to kind of show you how it goes together. So now you can see that the, the center of the mount is standing up out of the, uh, the larger mount by the two millimeter spacer height. And what that does is it allows the, the computer then, when we assemble this, goes in, locks in, there's no binding. It's still a very close fit. Um, I think you can see, yeah, got a little bit of a gap in there. Not much, but it's enough clearance. It's kind of restored back to about the level of clearance that was there without the case. So, pretty happy with this fit. Um, you know, it, it clears the case, goes on and off easy. There's no bunching or binding or tearing of the case. And that's basically what I was trying to avoid. So that's one fix, and that was that was pretty straightforward, right? That's off-the-shelf parts. Sorry, that's a fairly easy fix because it's off-the-shelf parts. You get the uh, McMaster car screws and spacers, and uh, just put it all together. So that's what I did initially. Now, because I want to fiddle with things and make things better, I'm actually going to 3D print a uh, an insert to go inside here that will push this up by the right amount, and I hope if I do it right I can I can rest it on more material inside this, although there's a lot going on in here, so I'm not sure how well it's going to work, but we'll see. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is how I'm going to create a spacer to uh, sit inside the Garmin out front mount and lift the actual Garmin bayonet connector and the Garmin itself up above the surface of the mount so that it'll clear the case that I've put on there. Uh, so please ignore the fact that I have a spacer already in my Tinkercad program here because I, I did this before. I recorded a, a, a walkthrough doing this and I, I wasn't really happy with how the recording came out and I also think I have some better ideas how to do the actual spacer itself. So we're going to start over. So we create a new design and it pulls up the, the work plane here. I like to work in orthographic view because then it's uh, it takes out the perspective and you can kind of see as if you're seeing like a a plan drawing, I guess, of the, of the parts that you're working with. So, I'd like to have the ruler in here because it gives me dimensions on anything that I drop into the, into the design. I can actually see what size they are and where they're located relative to each other. So we put the ruler in there. 
and then um, at its simplest, this spacer is really going to be a couple of washers, which you know is, is like what we had with the McMaster car spacers. So I drop in a cylinder, and of course it's way too big right now. It's it's 20 millimeters by 20, and it's 20 millimeters high. And what we're going to do is first of all increase the number of sides up to 64, and that smooths out the cylinder, makes it actually round. And it's just you know it doesn't matter, but it just makes it a little bit nicer looking. And then I want this to be externally 7 millimeters wide with 7 millimeters in diameter. And then of course we know that we basically want to have 2 millimeter height. So there we go. There's kind of the essence of our spacer, right? Um, now drop that down on the, on, the, on the origin here and of course it doesn't want to snap because it's, a, it's an odd number of units wide so we have to go in here and say minus 3.5 and minus 3.5. Maybe there's some way to change the snap grid, I don't know, but there we go. Now it's centered up on the bottom of the, of the ruler. And we need two of those, so we'll duplicate that, and we'll just drag one of them up here. And if you recall, um, the spacing from center to center on these guys is 19.7-ish, a, a little bit under 19.7 millimeters. So the way the dimensions show up in here, it's, it's usually center, you know, from the center of the ruler to the edge of one object, or the far edge, nearer far edge. So you have to kind of look and see where it's lining up. Um, right now, the center to center space would be 20 plus 3.5, so it would be 23.5. And, and we don't want that, we want 19.7. So what we need to do is basically subtract half the width of this spacer from this offset here, so, um, or from the, from the intended offset. So 19.7 minus 3.5 gives us 16.2, if I can type it in. And now basically if you, if you add this up, it's 16.2 plus 3.5, 19.7 to the center. And of course we have to fix the um, side to side offset and make this minus 3.5. And now they're lined up and they're in the right places. So there we have it. Two spacers, two millimeters high, seven millimeters in diameter. But they're solid, so we need to put a hole through these guys. So we'll drop in another uh, hole cylinder. And of course you can also you can put in a, a full cylinder and then change it to a hole also if you like. Either way works fine. And again, we're going to increase the number of sides up to 64. That's the max, just to smooth it out. Um, I found that uh, this the screw clearance hole I think is about 3.2 millimeters. Uh, I printed this earlier at 3.5, and it was a tight fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 3.8 millimeters. I think maybe, maybe four. We could even do four. Let's just do four. It's, it's not critical. So we'll make it. Uh, four millimeters and then the height doesn't really matter but I'm gonna punch it through the top and bottom of my spacer so I'm gonna make it four and then I'm gonna drop it down one millimeter into the plane and then we'll bring this up here now because we made this four millimeters it's nice the minus two is easy um, but the uh, the Y dimension we need to, to shrink that down so again you know right now it's at 16 let's see hold on 18 plus 2 would be 20 so basically that needs to come down by 2.3. So that'd be 15.7? Uh, nope. 16.7. That's what I'd get for doing math in my head. 17.7? I don't know. Whatever. There we go. 17.7. Yeah, that's right. 17.7 plus 2 is 19.7. Duplicate it. Drag it back down here. This one's easy. So there we go. Now we got two spacers with holes in them. Alright. So at this point, if I if I was to print this out, I'd have two spacers just like, or very similar to the aluminum spacers that I already had, and, and that's not really kind of taking full advantage of what we can do here. So I want to connect these two together and make them kind of a unit. So I'm going to bring in a box, and it's going to be 19.7 in that dimension. And basically the width is going to be 7 wide, minus 3.5. And then the height only needs to be two millimeters, so we can drop that down like that. So there we go. Now it's uh, two spacers connected together, so it's much easier to work with than two separate spacers. All right, but there's more we can do. Um, the mount has kind of a hole through it, so I, I would just soon block that off. It's it's um, it's not a big deal, but if I if I put in a little uh, plane here, um, we can actually kind of make this look a little prettier. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically make a box 
that fits in between these two guys. Like this. Like that seems about right, right there. Yeah. One thing that makes me nuts about Tinkercad is that you can't just uh, can't just move stuff. Let's see. So if we've got a if we've got a y dimension 19.7 minus 7, that would make it 12.7. That seems right. Why does it look funny? I guess it doesn't. I just feel like it's not the right width, but it is. It's good. Yeah, it's just touching. Okay. So now again, we can drop this guy down here, make it two millimeters thick. The width on this, I know, needs to be around, <clears throat> I think, 18 or so. Makes this minus 9. And I don't like the square corners. Um, so there's a bunch of ways to solve this. Uh, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to get clever here. And bear with me while I while I play with this. I'm just basically going to put some round corners and reconstruct this thing. Um, I think I want to have like a radius of two, so make it a circle that is more wide than uh, too high. So here. That looks all right. Duplicate that guy up there. This should be 12.5. Sorry, 12.2. Yes. Uh, and then we can duplicate both these guys. Nope, it offset it. <laughs> Gotta love it. Okay. <laughs> There we go. So there's radius corners, and now um, connecting this thing up, I can kind of eyeball this stuff. Um, minus uh, make it eight point seven. Yeah, that looks right. That looks correct. Oops, no. Yeah, good. Okay. And we need another box that we can drop in here. Two. And then this guy needs to be just two millimeters high, like that. Duplicate it, drag it down here. I apologize for not explaining the dimensions I'm doing here. I'm kind of working in my head. And I, it, it takes me longer to explain how I come up with these numbers than it does just to create them. So there we go. Check it out. Now we've got uh, a spacer that is two millimeters high and encompasses both screw locations and has rounded corners and is, is designed to fill the opening in the, in the garment mount itself. Now I'm actually going to add uh, a couple more details to this. So uh, we've created the basic shape that we want, but like I say, I, I kind of want to add <clears throat> a little bit of detail to it. Just, I'm going to enhance this a little bit and make it a little bit better. So these orange areas here, these standoff things, those are the same diameter as the posts on the uh, on the bottom side of the bayonet mount. And what I want to kind of do is make it um, make the make this little spacer kind of nest into, or, or have I'm sorry, rather have the, the bayonet mount kind of nest into <clears throat> into the spacer. So. And what I want to do is I'm going to fill this in and make a little shelf. Uh, it may be hard to imagine what I'm saying here, but what I'm going to do is let's, let's just group this together, guys. Guys, here, we'll take this whole thing. Uh, I'm going to take out the holes because I want to keep those for later use. Let's group this thing. All right, now we've got a nice simple shape to work with. <clears throat> and I'm going to bring in a box. And I'm going to make this guy, I think, maybe like three millimeters high. Yeah enough <clears throat> and we're going to make it basically seven and a half wide so quick and easy I'm sorry seven wide there we go and make that minus 3.5 to center it up 
and then at this point drag that up to the zero line and take this down to about yeah maybe something like six five doesn't really matter okay so check that out now um, <clears throat> I guess I could have punched my holes through there earlier yeah let's go ahead and do that I'm just gonna grab the holes and the main piece group that it's cooking as long as there's a little highlight around this thing it means it's still thinking when the highlight goes away we'll know it's done did I not get all the pieces? Maybe I didn't get all the pieces. Let's undo that and try again. This... Come on. That guy. This guy. I'm doing shift-click, so, and then we'll group it. Okay, that's what I want to see. Alright. Now, um, I want to hollow out this piece here so that it forms a little shelf, just a little kind of a locating area for the, uh, the post on the back of the bayonet mount. So, come in here make this 7 by 7 and then we're going to actually pick this up 2 millimeters, whoops, too far 2 millimeters off the deck and uh, shrink it down the height doesn't matter um, bring this in here get it where it needs to be centered up um, minus 3.5 and then uh, This needs to be minus 3.5 also. Yes, okay. So there we go. So you can see that that's going to basically... Um, I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see more clearly. You can see that that hole is going to kind of knock out a semicircular area in, in the top of that, uh, that box we added. Alright, so now at this point, we can, we can, I'm going to shift-click and, and grab, grab the box and the hole, and I'm going to duplicate both. Rotate 180 degrees. Slide one of them up here. And then uh, I'm going to fix up my minus 3.5 again to get that centered horizontally. And uh, this guy becomes 14, I think. Is that right? No. 13.7? Yes. <laughs> Just intuitive math. Okay. Um, so there we go. Um, I think actually I'm going to make this... I'm going to bring this in. There's really not a lot of reason to have extra material there, and it might get in the way of the, the little spring tabs on the back of the bayonet mount itself. So there you go, 5 and... F uh, why is that one 4.7? Make this one. 5. Make this... Seven. That looks right. Okay. And now, just for laughs, I'm actually, to make this a little bit nicer and cleaner, and because these knife edges in here aren't going to print anyway, like, like, okay, I'm going to zoom in. This knife edge, if you can see where I'm, where I'm highlighting with the mouse, oops. Um, this knife edge in here is not going to print anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this box, and I'm going to say, let's radius it with a radius of maybe two. Maybe three. Possibly even four. Yeah, okay, I'm starting to kind of like that better. Maybe, maybe even six. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like it. See, that's <laughs> it's starting to look kind of graceful now. All right, so we'll do the same thing with this guy here. Radius of six. And what that does is it kind of, instead of it being a square, sharp-edged thing, it's going to make it into this little rounded boss that uh, just has what we need and nothing extra. In fact, I might even experiment. I'm going to go a little higher on the radius. Let's try 8 just to see. Yeah, okay. I like it. Let's do it. 8 is good. And it's it's kind of raising all the corners of that, little, of that rectangular prism. Um, a lot of it doesn't matter. These holes here, okay. Yeah, I should have left my holes earlier. Okay. So now what we need to do is ungroup this whole guy here and then regroup it and there we go so you can see what I'm getting at here I've got um, a piece that let's make it a, there we go okay, maybe that's easier to see a piece that uh, <clears throat> has the spacers also has a little locating ledge here to kind of keep the uh, 
the bayonet mount in the right place so it's not floating around on top of the surface. And then here's the underside. And if I wanted, I could get clever. I could, you know, I could do stuff on the back there or hang something off the bottom. If if, if I was going to do that though, then I'd, I'd probably print it the other direction. Um, I realize I'm sort of babbling right now, but I'm, I'm thinking that there's a, there's an opening in the mount, and if you wanted to, you could take advantage. You can actually drop something out of the bottom side here. If you wanted to have a a mount for like a GoPro or something like that, you could actually do it. But in that case, you'd have to get rid of these bosses on the top because there's no way to print it otherwise. Unless you put uh, screw holes in here, and then you could have a two-piece assembly. But so there you have it. Okay, so at this point, I'm pretty happy with this, and I'm going to go in here and uh, change it from the, the goofy Tinkercad name to something more logical like Garmin 1030 Mount 2, because I already have one. <laughs> and then we'll save that guy. Close this little menu. And now, if I've got this select or not, I can export this. Everything in the design, I'm going to export the whole thing to an STL file. And uh, save it to my desktop. All right, so uh, that's how I create the uh, the CAD file. And the next thing I'm going to do is print it out. All right, that god-awful noise you hear in the background is the, the fan on the 3D printer warming up. Uh, but basically, we're going to print out our little Garmin mount spacer. So we're in Cura, and this is an older version, but it, it works well with my printer, so I keep using it. And I'm basically just going to come in here and load my file, which is the uh, Garmin Spacer 2. That up, and there it is. You can see the the spacer sitting there in the kind of the mock-up of the uh, the build floor, or the platform, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to basically say center on platform, and then I'm going to come in here and I'm actually going to give this a tiny bit of rotation. I think that when things are slightly off axis, uh, it forces the printer to dither along the sides, and I, and I feel like there's less issues with um, resolution and such. Maybe I'm just being nuts, but it, it kind of seems like things print a little better if they're not square to the platform, uh, such that you're forcing the, the stepper motors to work all the time and not just uh, go to the nearest point on an XY and then run in a straight line. This way they're, they're forced to kind of continuously modulate and step along a diagonal line, you know, no, no matter where they are in the design here. Uh, fill density, 100%. And that's just because there's no reason to have any hollow areas inside here. It's a spacer. I want it to be strong. It's small. It's only going to take eight minutes to print. So, so there we have it. Um, so at this point, basically, I, I'm going to go ahead and print it. So I say print with USB. And uh, there's a, a, I don't know if you'll be able to see this other window that comes up. But uh, there's a separate window that comes up, and it has the actual printer temperature and the controls for the printer itself. So I go in there, and I start the process and the printer will start warming up. Now you can see that there's some plastic hanging off the printer. I'm going to have to go in there and, and clean that off once it gets done checking the zero. This is it, Right now the printer is checking the height above the, the platform. It has a little uh, magnetic proximity sensor it uses to determine how close the print head is. And it kind of re-zeroes itself every time you start it up. It checks three points and then averages yeah, it out. So I have to get in here real quick before it starts printing and Hit that print nozzle with a piece of tape and uh, clean off all the, the leakage from the extruder and then the printer starts running. Now right now it's printing a skirt or like a moat kind of thing around the uh, around the part and there'll be a little bit of stray plastic that I might try and clean up here. You know it looks pretty good. Okay I got a little bit out of there. So this is an eight-minute process. I'm just going to let this run, and I'll, I'll, I'll fast-forward it uh, for YouTube. So you can kind of watch the thing print at high speed. should be kind of fun. We're just going to come in and I'm going to basically get it off the tape, the painter's tape, with an X-Acto. And there's 
I don't know, maybe there's a better way of doing this, but I just want to get something underneath there and lift it up. And I'll probably have to retape my platform after this, but there we go. Yeah, I'll pull up a little bit of tape. So there we have it. There's the, the finished piece. I need to take that, trim that down a little bit, but it looks good. All right, so we're done printing. Uh, I got my piece all printed out here, and it is basically time to put it all together. So you can see here's the the new spacer that I just printed. It's blue PLA, two millimeters thick, and what this does is it drops into the out front mount right there. And it's a very nice close fit. And then the, the bayonet mount itself sits on top of it. I'm actually going to show you what this looks like outside here. It's going to drop in there like that. You can see I have those little bosses. Actually, it makes it stick on there, so it's sort of self-locating. Ta-da! All right. Take this guy, drop it into the mount, the larger mount. And then uh, these are the original screws that, that came with the Garmin. And I have my longer M3 by 8 screws here. So we'll put those in. Because otherwise it's not, the, with that extra two millimeter length. All right, hold on, my phone's ringing. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Oops, just bumped my camera again. All right, so we're gonna basically tighten this guy in here. I kind of wonder if maybe I made that. Whoops, nope, it's off center. That's what the problem is. I'm not lined up. Clumsy. Okay. Bear with me. There we go. This goes here. That. One screw. And then the other screw here. Now, I'm, I'm actually kind of mocking this up, because if I was doing this for real, I'd put some Loctite on these guys, just a little a drop of blue or purple Loctite on the uh, on those M3 screw, M3 screws to keep them from backing out. But since I just want to show how this fits, I'm just going to do it dry for now. So we get those guys tightened in there. The rattling you hear is the, the open clamp here, because nothing up in here is rattly. So there you go. Now you can see that the uh, the bayonet mount is sitting up above the uh, the arm by two millimeters. And on the back side, that's the back of the piece we printed. I think I may probably redo this in black just so it's hidden. Um, but for you know for showing you guys what it looks like, the blue is handy, and you can see it in behind the the little spring-loaded ears that actually retain the, the computer. And then if we come in with the, the computer itself, and this is with the, the KW Mobile case on it. If we come in, drop this into the mount, twist it in there. All right, now you can see, I don't know if I can get enough light in between there, but there we go. You can see there's a gap. We've kept a gap in there so that the case clears the mount all around. There's no bunching and binding. And, uh, and it's very stable. There's no there's no tipping or rocking of the mount here. It's very stable in there. So it's really good. So basically, we just added a couple of millimeters to the height of the the mount, or of the of the bayonet receptacle above the mount, without altering any any functionality. Now, if I did get the extended battery, uh, I'd have to figure out something different because um, the extended battery has a, has a, a pogo pin post that comes through the center here and contacts the battery and then carries electricity through a hollow space in this mount to the uh, to the computer. So if I owned one I could take a look at it and maybe figure out something there but for now I don't. I have the older style remote battery or extended battery from Garmin and it plugs into the back of the computer here so you know with its own set of issues <laughs> the connector tends to run into the bars that kind of thing but uh, not a big deal. The 1030 has such good battery life that it's really not a big deal anyway. But there you have it. That's uh, 
that's basically my modification to the, the Garmin mount to clear an aftermarket case. And you could do similar things, you know, if you wanted to move this up further down, you could use longer screws, you could do quite a bit of different things if you wanted. You could even possibly cant this thing relative to the mount. I don't know if you'd, if that would be any of any use to anybody, but you could. Um, so there you have it. So there's one more thing I want to show you before I let you go. And that is this, uh, this little case logic case that I picked up. Um, I got the Sifri's. I think it was about seven or eight bucks. And uh, you can see the little card that it came on there. Um, I don't know if it has a model number. I'll put it in the uh, in the description of the video later if I if I can find one. But it's uh, I've seen an Amazon Basics one that's very similar to this too. I think it's probably made by Case Logic and just not labeled. But uh, it's a little case that just fits the uh, the Edge 1030 perfectly. So you know it just it's just the right size, the back pocket, so you can drop the computer in there, and then uh, you know have a nice way to carry the computer when it's not on your bike. And uh, it's got a little belt loop and a the D-ring here if you wanted to hang it on something. And then it's got a front pocket, which is handy for, I don't know, maybe you've got an SD card or a charging cord that you want to put in here. Uh, you know, really anything that kind of goes with your, with your computer. Uh, you could even put screen wipes in here if you wanted. Uh, so just kind of cute. It's just just a nice little thing to have because, you know, I, I sometimes feel nervous when I've got my uh, expensive computer just sitting in a duffel bag and I'm carrying it to a ride or whatever. Uh, this way, at least I know it's not getting banged around. So there's that. And uh, again, thank you for watching my video on modifying the, the Edge 1030 flush out front mount. Oops, I've got it upside down. Uh, flush out front mount to clear an aftermarket case on the, uh, the computer itself. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you like it, um, please subscribe. Link will be up here somewhere. Or watch other you know related videos that I'll post up here in the end credits. Thank you very much. See you soon.